Welcome to Real Relationship Goals, a podcast all about the realities of healthy relationships. Real Relationship Goals is a project of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence or harassment and is seeking support, services, or needs more information, links to resources and our hotline number can be found in the description. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of their organizations or affiliates. everybody welcome back to real relationship goals mini season episode three my name is kyla i'm maria i'm maria all right let's go ahead and dive in maria i believe you have our story for today i sure do um so a few years ago i was planning the first date for my partner and i or not the first date but the first big date for my partner and i so i and we had chosen Austin and we were like okay cool this is what I got to work with so I was like googling and stuff and I was like okay like this museum sounds cool and this Austin Zoo sounds cool and like there's a hotel we could stay the night have it be like a fun thing um what I didn't anticipate was vastly how different everything was from the pictures so <laughs> We um like the museum was great. Um, we went to Wonder Spaces, oh, and yes, it's so much fun. Um, and that was really cool. It's a great experience. We've been a few times since then. Mm -hmm. Um, but the zoo, we thought would be more like the Fort Worth Zoo. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's it's so sad. The that zoo is very. No. Yeah, I don't know if y'all have been. I have. Yeah, it's like an outdoor thing, which mm -hmm. I. Yes, that <laughs> it's a zoo. It's a zoo. Um, that part wasn't unexpected. But it's like all like dirt everywhere and like very small enclosures like and yeah, concrete and like it's a very interesting experience. Um, so that was a little doesn't exactly set the romantic. Yeah, <laughs> so it was like the hotel was nice. The zoo fell a little short. Um, we had a great time looking at the turtles, though. I think those were great. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was not what we thought. <laughs> and so um, we had fun. Like there's, we got to feed llamas and goats, and I think that's really what that's all about. <laughs> it's all about the llamas. It might have been like a different kind of zoo, where like you know they have those ones where you just go and you ride along and then. You get to feed all the animals if you guys got to feed llamas and stuff like that no like a saf like the drive to do safari in franklin like that and then yeah. there's one where you could just like sit on a trailer and then go and see no and see this one when you park in like a really weird parking lot mm. and then you like walk a distance and from like this little mobile tra mobile trailer thing you get a ticket oh. and like a drink if you want to drink <laughs> and then you just kind of go your way on. through yeah you just what? there's nothing like here like you have the africa zone and the asia no it was just animals animals well thank you for <laughs> sorry about that experience but thank you for sharing it with us and all of you listening at home yeah, so um uh, so as you may know we are talking about planning a date so planning a date could be so much fun, so exciting, scary, vulnerable at the same time. Um, so you might like be excited to get to finally spend time with a person, or if this is your first time, just like planning a date with a person, um, just actually getting to experience that person and getting to know them for the first time can be exciting. Um, so you're thinking of like all the fun activities and just all the things that you could do with that person but you might also be pretty worried that they might not like what you mm -hmm. have planned. Yeah. And so what we're talking about today is like, how do we respond to planning a date mm -hmm. in healthy ways? What does that look like in unhealthy ways? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And speaking of that, Maria, Kyla, <laughs> what are your thoughts on planning a date? I don't know it kind of depends on which way you take it like if you're planning an elaborate date mm -hmm. like 
that's going to take some time but mm -hmm. I think a date could be even as simple as like watching a movie at home mm -hmm. or like going out to your favorite Panda Express is always like one of my go-tos or like just hanging out in a park like it, it doesn't have to always be like this huge like candle at dinner by the sea it doesn't have to be expensive to be a date it oh, can yeah. be pb and j's on a blanket in the park <laughs> going for ice cream yeah. real simple a car drive yeah car drive. yeah uh car drive to look at christmas lights it, it, around in the winter time yeah that's that is one of my favorite things to do i love the lights Mm, that's mm. a good one that's a good one don't go towards the light yeah. but um I think definitely in just kind of focusing on the healthy category first uh like to start up top and then and then work our way down mm -hmm. um but definitely start thinking about the healthy things at first is um you always want to be intentional mm -hmm. in a variety of ways so I'm thinking kind of like hey like whenever I'm planning like special dates and stuff for Everett and I it's like I want to think of like, what's something he's going to enjoy? Like, I like to think I know him fairly well four years in, mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. But um, it's like, it, there's something that's really exciting about being able to plan something that you know is going to make them happy or something that you think will make them happy. Um, so just kind of like that level of intention. Um, but I think that something that comes with time that I want to kind of like <laughs> say is ideal in the beginning is also being relaxed you know mm -hmm. and it's hard like the cure to anxiety is never somebody else saying don't be anxious mm -hmm. <laughs> but um just want to emphasize that um it's okay it's gonna be okay um just kind of like we said in our last episode here's a plug for episode two uh, how to ask somebody out mm -hmm. um just as long as you're going into it with good intentions and like you're being respectful and honorable it'll it'll probably be okay like even if you end up going to the world's worst zoo <laughs> sorry austin <laughs> um like you, you anyway yeah, yeah you can it can still be okay you can still have a good time everett and i've gone to some truly terrible so bad um live music events yeah <laughs> literally just last week we heard one of the worst bands ever mm -hmm. um and we had a great time just because we were there together and we like spending time together so we were still able to have fun so hopefully hearing that is able to relieve some tension bring but some new bring some peace yeah to the situation and I also think like in talking about the healthy ways to plan a date mm -hmm. um a big thing that could possibly help uh is asking for another person's perspective like yeah. okay so what do you think about this type of date like mm -hmm. going on a hike mm -hmm. or what do you think about this restaurant have you ever been to this restaurant before do you think that this is a good place to take somebody mm -hmm. or like bringing in that close friend um you know is a good way to help you out and also relieve some of that pressure off you as well mm -hmm. I think I've, I've done that a couple of times in my life it's like okay hey I have this idea and I'm gonna run it by you yeah. if it sounds good let me know if it doesn't let me know mm -hmm. so yeah that's one way in it's like, at that. surprises are fun mm -hmm. but every single date doesn't have to be a surprise yeah, and right. like even the first date doesn't have to be a surprise mm -hmm. and maybe it's better if the first date's not a surprise because communication is so key I'm like a broken record I'm going crazy <laughs> but uh, communication is so key and I just think of like I've seen and like read just in different media of like those first date stories where like whoever's planning the date won't tell the other person mm -hmm. what they're going to do mm -hmm. so maybe they're going bowling and the other person's in a dress and heels or like dress shoes and a suit mm -hmm. and they are just not ready for that experience and there just wasn't that like strong communication so communicate yeah like yeah communicating yeah. is just <laughs> a really really important component to that it's like also don't be afraid to also whoever you're planning the date for like giving that person the opportunity to provide input mm -hmm. on what you guys want to mm -hmm. do you know it's if you're planning a date for a person and you just like catch them off guard just like with the whole like if they show up in a dress and heels or a suit or whatever they're not dressed for the yeah. occasion like if you're going on a hike I don't think nobody's <laughs> to hike in heels, hike in heels <laughs> or you know, know in a suit so challenge mode 
feel like um, that can also be a reducer for anxiety and just take that pressure off you if you incorporate that person in planning the date as well. Mm -hmm. It's like asking them what kind of things that they're interested in is would be really, really helpful. So mm -hmm. yeah. being open to the compromise, because I feel like this whole thing ties in super well with like the concept of love languages. Mm -hmm. So there are five. I'll count them off and we'll see if they total up to five. I think uh, they do. Yeah, because it's uh, words of affirmation. That's mine in case anybody's wondering. Um, that's great. You're doing great. <laughs> um, acts of service, um, gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there were five. Yay. But um, so there are the five different love languages. And generally, everybody has kind of like a main way that they receive love. So that's the way that you feel most loved. Like I said, mine is words of affirmation. And then you also have the way that you um, like give love most naturally. Like it's the way that you display affection most naturally. Mine coincidentally also happens to be words of affirmation, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be like that. Like you could receive love more with physical touch and show love with acts of service. So it's they're completely like mix and matching and changing and it can be different depending on how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so... I think key to keep that kind of in mind, like in the back of your head whenever you're planning these things. Mm -hmm. um, and just whenever you're like whenever you're planning these things and whenever you're just kind of thinking about your relationship in general of like how can I best show this person like how I care about them? And that doesn't always mean me doing what I want and what I think is best, but knowing like, hey. Like, I want to show Ariana like how important she is to me and how much I like working together. So um, because I give words of affirmation, I'm going to write you a really like, nice note. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're like, oh, that's not really what makes me feel appreciated. What makes me feel appreciated is the moment I'm just using examples that <laughs> are in my head right now. What makes me feel appreciated is whenever you bring donuts like for our team. I did. I brought them for recording today. So it's like, maybe that's what does it is she's like, oh, it makes me feel acknowledged whenever you want to do like fun little things for us. Like mm -hmm. that makes me feel special. Um, and that's okay. So like maybe sometimes I can write fun notes and sweet notes that say like, hey, I really see how hard you're working and that's good. But then also sometimes in knowing what makes Ariana feel appreciated, I do that sometimes too. So a combination. And I feel like that kind of carries over into planning dates of just like, you may have something that you really like to do. Like Maria might really like going on hikes. Um, mm -hmm. But Bex might not really be a hiking person. She's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Well, nice. laughs> Maybe she doesn't really like hiking and that's okay too. So like maybe every now and then you could do like a, like a low level hike or something mm -hmm. like that that isn't really strenuous, doesn't really take a long time. But then also maybe you just like, in addition to that, Maybe you have like a nice little picnic put together mm -hmm. for whenever you get to wherever you're hiking and stuff getting like that. ideas. Yeah, right. break them down mm -hmm. like that. Or um, like maybe you just like go to a bookshop and like you mm -hmm. each pick out books for each other and then you sit and you read together. I'm, I'm just giving away free data. I know, now, I'm, guys. I hope she doesn't yeah. listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so it, it can look like different things based on like how the other person like best receives love. Mm -hmm. yeah I know like personally thankfully her and I have very similar ways yeah. of receiving and giving um and so you know we're very well in tune with how, to, mm -hmm. how I give and how she receives and we that acknowledge great. that like maybe this isn't the way I like to receive it but I do acknowledge that they're showing me mm -hmm. the love um and like for example like quality time mm -hmm. doing nothing and just reading in the same room is like perfect mm -hmm. but like if we're feeling like very acts of service maybe like I'll take like get her make her a strawberry milk for bed mm -hmm. or whatever <laughs> um most nights yeah <laughs> um and so it's like it's kind of like that yeah. um to where it planning something with someone doesn't have to be rocket science it could be something like very like as as long as you know like the other person your partner very well yeah. or even relatively well yeah. um I, I don't think you can go wrong with like a, a date I think yeah I agree yeah. it's like just basically 
with the whole compromise piece mm -hmm. and talking about receiving and giving love, being able to create balance for both individuals mm -hmm. of pouring into each other mm -hmm. of how they receive love and how you give love and vice versa. Um, so basically just keeping in mind how someone likes to be loved or likes to be cared for because mm -hmm. um, you just really want to be intentional mm -hmm. with like you know creating that balance with within each other and so yeah I think that's really great and an important aspect when you're planning a date mm -hmm. as well and like this also this applies to like the teenagers and like our students I know our students are in that phase where they're starting to plan dates and go out with each other and stuff like that so if you're listening here's some tips because you, you just got free game with a lot of dates it's <laughs> true mm -hmm. um yeah for sure what about some like unhealthy ways <laughs> to plan a date because it is possible and it's not just planning a bad date or a date that goes badly. Like that's not necessarily, an, an, that's not an unhealthy thing, but what are we thinking? Um, so I think like, if you do decide to like compromise and do the other person's thing, so like maybe you weren't feeling the movie, but you go to the movie anyway, cause mm -hmm. that's what the other person wants to be like, see, um or do it would be like it'd be like oh yeah are you having a good time well I mean I guess this is what you wanted to do or I'm I'd here. rather yeah I like I'm here mm -hmm. you know like comments like that I think are like kind of disrespectful to I think both of you really because mm -hmm. you're not speaking up for yourself and saying like you know this isn't maybe like I would love to see this with you mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm feeling that today yeah mm -hmm. and so just kind of like not giving your needs attention as well mm -hmm. um but also not giving the other person the respect and making them feel valued would be i think like an unhealthy way mm -hmm. and like criticizing or nitpicking oh yeah like if somebody like took the time to like or like maybe like it doesn't you don't always have to plan dates entirely around the other person like sometimes like some of my favorite things can be like, if I'm really excited about something, like I really love this restaurant. Like there was one, I don't even remember where it was. Uh, no, there was a Chinese food restaurant here in town and I was really excited about it. So I took Everett and I was like, I think you're really going to like oh, this place. Cafe, Cafe House, House ah, yes. so good. <laughs> and um, I was like, I think you're really going to like it. And he was like, oh yeah, like I'm excited to try it. Mm -hmm. And we went and he ended up absolutely loving it and because like partially because it was something I was excited to share with mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and it was something I thought he he might like but like maybe he wouldn't like it I don't know I tend to like Chinese food a little bit more than he does mm -hmm. um but he was excited about it so rather than being like oh like um like we got there and there wasn't anybody there because it was also like 5 p.m so it was a little early mm -hmm. but there wasn't anybody. so from the beginning he could have been like oh well like there's nobody here so it's probably not very good that would be a lie because it is really good mm -hmm. um but like there were those opportunities to like criticize or nitpick and um like that's yeah that's really not a good thing or a fun way and oh another thing is um like criticizing the way that the other person like if you're planning the date and then you criticize the way that the person that you asked are on the date is engaging with whatever mm -hmm. you're doing mm -hmm big yikes yeah big yikes for me the red flag yeah that makes me <laughs> that makes me that makes me feel yucky inside mm. so is that anything else that we can think of uh ignoring boundaries mm. that you and that person have created um and communicated with each other mm -hmm. like okay like you already know that this person doesn't really like to engage with this certain activity but you still continue to, you know, plan that date around that certain activity. Like, oh, well, I really like to go to the movies, but I know my partner likes to go outside for a picnic. Mm -hmm. So I necessarily only think about my own needs mm -hmm. and like, oh, this new movie is coming out today. We should go. And they're like, mm, well, no, I'm not quite feeling it today. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we go out? you know out to eat outside or something like that and you just like no this is what we're doing no this is what we're doing yeah um that kind of feeds into the 
unhealthy aspect of being inconsiderate mm -hmm. of your partner's feelings. So just like, and also just like rejecting those boundaries that you have already established. Just like, if you're going to compromise, compromise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one way of looking at that. Yeah, especially just with boundaries of like safety, like or sense of safety too, because like maybe somebody's more like introverted or has a hard time with like louder noises and is sensitive to that mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Or like you know, it's like okay, they're pretty sensitive to loud noise. Maybe they're sensitive to like bright or flashing lights. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take them to a concert, and it's like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. no, that's completely just ignoring like all those things. And maybe every now and then, like they're up for it. Mm -hmm. But if you're just like every weekend, we're going to go to like this really, like, we're going to go to a metal show mm -hmm. <laughs> every single weekend. Uh, I'm going to take my introverted partner <laughs> who, who is loud noise averse to a metal concert every weekend. I'm going to say this with love. That relationship is probably not going to last for very long. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just because like Ariana said, you're ignoring those boundaries mm -hmm. that have been set and just like ignoring that sense of safety. And that's just, as the kids say, not cool. <laughs> but, but yeah, I feel like that gives us a good space to transition kind of into our relationship goal, mm -hmm. uh, which I have for us mm -hmm. this week. Uh, so this week, our relationship goal for you, for us, for everybody, is to take some time to intentionally reflect on how you best give and receive love. Um sorry, I got just, I was reading my notes and I got distracted a lot. I lost my place. Um, and if you have a partner, uh, what is the way that they best, uh, give and receive love? Maybe that's even a conversation that you could have together of, Hey, like I've started, like just, I've been thinking, and this is how I think that, um, I feel the most loved is whenever you do these things, what are some things that I do that make you feel really loved? Um, and you can use that knowledge to either try and plan a date or do something that, um, intentionally shows that you were listening and that you were paying attention. So something to just kind of reflect that love language. So give that a shot. And then our recommendation for today. It me. It you. It me. Um, so my recommendation is specific, I guess, like there's a bunch of different games, mm -hmm. but specifically the game, We're Not Really Strangers, which is a card game. Um, you can find it online. Mm -hmm. as you can with most everything um but it's like a really fun game it has like three different levels and it goes from like pretty super superficial stuff from like not like superficial but like really like entry. on the surface yeah entry level. yeah like entry level questions um like you know um what's your favorite childhood memory like something like really light to like really heavy stuff mm -hmm. um and it's just like a really cool way to get to know your partner a little bit better uh, which I think one of the questions even is like, what's your ideal date? Mm. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so it, it helps you get to know them a little bit better. And, you know, it's always a fun time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just a, a reminder. Ariana gave me a reminder as we <laughs> finished filming the second episode that I did an oopsie and forgot to let you know that if you're watching us on YouTube right now, uh, hit that subscribe button or maybe you're listening on Spotify or anything like that. So make sure you subscribe, follow wherever you are listening, just so that uh, you're able to keep track because we've got one more how to coming at you next week. So we will see you then. Bye. Bye. Adios. Thanks so much for tuning in to Real Relationship Goals. This episode was produced by the Prevention and Education Department of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. You can follow us on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention. See you next time.